Hey guys, and welcome to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And today I am going to share with you my graphics settings. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I get asked a lot of the time on the stream what's the computer specs, what are the graphics settings that I'm using uh, to achieve the uh, the images that I get. Um, the first thing I'm going to tell you is I do not have um, the greatest PC in the world. The PC I'm using costs uh, about £750. It's a um, Ryzen 5 3600. It only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, we've got a GeForce NVIDIA 1660, not the 1660 Ti, just the 1660. And uh, the RAM is uh, 2400. Uh, hertz. You can check out these full specs on uh, on the video description. I'll pop a link in there. Um, so, but as you can tell from that, it's certainly not the most expensive computer in the world. And bear in mind that when I'm uh, st live streaming, I've got a single computer doing all of the work. So it is it's handling everything quite well. I think Flight Sim 2020 is unbelievably well optimized. Um, I had FSX on my PC obviously before Flight Sim 2020 came out and Flight Sim 2020 not only looks unbelievably amazing uh, compared to FSX but it runs it much smoother so I'd say it's a very well optimized um, program so let me jump into the uh, into the settings then and quickly share these with you so if we have a look at our graphics I know this is what everybody's really interested in so Currently, I run it in windowed mode. That is because, as I say, I am live streaming, so uh, I do want to get access to th the streaming software, things like that. Um, I also like to be able to bring up the VATSIM window as well when needed. I'm running it on a single monitor as well when I'm doing that, so it, I haven't got two displays for the graphics card to try and process. Uh, so we're running at uh, 1920 by 1080 and global rendering quality is custom as i think most of you will find because obviously you change this to the presets of low medium high ultra it just sets more or less everything uh to uh, to the global rendering quality status so things that i have done v-sync is turned off for some reason v-sync turning that on does uh, does lower your frame rates frame rate limiter so that's turned off render scaling then so basically mm, I'm very computer illiterate as I make no um, <laughs> as I tell people on the on the streams but basically what I found with this the render scaling if you pop that up basically you're trying to increase the resolution of um, of the images that you are seeing even though you're running a 1080 resolution so I've got 110 set there I have found increasing that really really works the GPU and um, so your frame rates start to drop 110 is absolutely fine. You could even put it at 100 to be fair, um, and that's uh, that's still pretty decent. Anti-aliasing, so we've got that at TAA, which is the best one. So PC copes with that quite happily. Level of terrain, I'm happy leaving that at 100. Obviously, if I had a more powerful PC, I would then turn that up. So people ask me, am I running ultra? Am I running high? Am I running medium? And I always say it's okay cross between high and medium with a couple of ultras so the terrain vector detail what does this mean that is essentially things like as it says your oceans lakes rivers and roads and how accurately they are placed on the terrain below you well I like to have everything quite accurate I think it looks much better so I pop that on ultra buildings there is very very little difference between high and ultra and medium and high so I could probably scale that back down to medium and you wouldn't notice a big difference when you go down to low that's when you do notice a difference um, so I could uh, I can I, I've got high I, to be fair I could pop that down to medium and graphically you probably couldn't tell trees grasses and bushes well how often do we actually see that I'm not flying as a, a VFR pilot in the Alaskan bush um, so I'm quite happy with those being on medium objects level of detail again it's not the greatest computer in the world so I'm happy to leave that at uh, at 100 
Now, here's a biggie. Volumetric clouds. Well, how amazing do the clouds look in Flight Sim 2020? And I wanted that. And thankfully, the computer can handle Ultra for those, as long as I make sacrifices along the way, which I'm happy to do. Texture resolution, of course, that is exactly as it sounds. Happy to run that on high. Then the antiscopic filtering, which... Um, I've played around with a little bit, not noticed too much details in uh, in that, but then because I'm only running 1080, that may be the reason for that. So happy to leave that on 16. Texture, super sampling. So this is the floor markings, which become more apparent at custom built airports with the taxiway signs on the floor and things like that. Um, so that's down at 66. Could go up to 88, but we'll leave that where it is. Again, texture synthesis, um, happy to be that at high. Water waves, they look fantastic even at medium. And water does really drain the GPU in the way that's rendered. So I'll, uh, I'd rather have the volumetric clouds looking amazing rather than the water. I'm usually quite high up. Shadow maps, so these are the maps of the shadows which sort of uh, are obviously seen inside the cockpit or the cabin and even playing with those I've not managed to stop that shimmering effect so uh, happy to leave those at uh, at 768, where did we go, there we go, 768 terrain shadows, exactly the same thing, a shadow is a shadow I don't need them to be absolutely brilliant um, because we don't spend that much time looking at them the contact shadows, so this is how they um, the contact shadows, I believe, are the things that you see as well in detail in the uh, in the flight deck. But again, quite happy for those to be uh, left at medium. Not noticed a great problem with that. Windshield effects. Well, I did want to have some... When it's raining, I did want to see those good windshield effects. Um, I could probably even get away with turning that up to, uh, up to ultra. Because uh, when it's raining and that's coming in, boy, do they look good. Um, ambient occlusion shadows, no idea what that is, but we're on medium for that. Reflections, that's self-explanatory, and we're on high. And you can see the reflections on the aircraft and uh, other items as you swing by them. Um, high, no problem with that. Light shafts, we don't need those to be high because uh, we know what the light shafts are. And as the sun shining through the clouds, etc., it looks absolutely fine. Uh, bloom effect is turned on. That just looks good when we're outside the aircraft. Depth of field, then. This is only used, as far as I can tell, when you're using the drone cam and trying to take some uh, nice depth of field pictures. Uh, happy for that to be on ultra because it's not used all of the time. In fact, it's hardly ever used um, during a flight. I'm only ever using it when I'm trying to take some screenshots, mostly for uh, YouTube thumbnails. Motion blur, no idea. Turn that on low. Leave it in. The, leave a comment on the uh, video if you can tell me what that does. Uh, I've not noticed any difference between turning that up or down. Uh, lens correction. We've left that turned on. Lens flare. Left that turned on. Basically, lens flare is sort of. I don't know if you've noticed, um, but if you're looking at your instruments and then you pan to look up and the sun's quite bright it just takes that fraction of a second for almost the eyes to adjust i think that's quite nice and this is a biggie as well particularly flying the flyby wire um a320 and that is the glass cockpit refresh rate so i've got that toned down to uh, to medium that seems to increase frames quite a lot, particularly in the fly-by-wire flight deck. You can also turn off the first officer displays, which also makes a big difference. So, if I just come out of that, go back, uh, discard, we don't want to apply and save anything that I've changed. I don't think I did change anything. Let's hit resume. And at the moment, I'm sat on the ground at Maco Simulations Manchester. And we're getting a solid 30, uh, 30 frames per minute. Okay, obviously we're not flying and the flight deck isn't even turned on. So inside this flight deck, I'm just double checking. Yeah, we're still getting, actually it's gone up a little bit with everything turned off. So <clears throat> we're getting between 35 and 40 at the moment. So that's absolutely fine for flying. If you can keep that, then you're gonna have a nice smooth ride. So what happens if I do decide, you know what? let me push my GPU even this video may get a little bit stuttery if I do that so let me go back to my settings so instead of custom which we've got at the moment 
I'm going to go to Ultra. So that is everything's turned on, as you can see, as high as it would possibly go. Supply and save that. Okay. Resume. So, admittedly, everything does look a tiny little bit sharper. Runway, te uh, taxiway textures are looking a little neater as well. But as I'm panning around, I can see that my PC probably can't cope with that. Um, and if I check the frame rates now, I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm probably running now between 20 and 25. I suppose if I was in the air, I could probably get away with turning things up a little bit. But I want things to be smooth, and that really helps to the immersion for me. Um, so what I can do, let's just now go back to general. And it's all about finding your base, your baseline, if you like. So if we go to high end, apply and save that. Go back, resume. Now, how much of, diff of a difference can you actually see? Probably not very much if we're running uh, a 1080 display. But the frame rates are back up at uh, back up at 30, and if we jump inside the flight deck. Have a quick look around. Uh, what are we at now? We're at we're between 30 and 35. Okay. And if I drop those just one more, head back to the general settings. So now we're on medium. Okay, everything's medium. There's a couple of things as well on low. Even the glass cockpit refresh rate has gone to low as well. And um, apply and save that. Go back. Resume. So now everything is on low. It's just going to take a second to uh, to come good. There we go. Right. So now we're getting about forty uh, between forty and forty-five frames per second in the flight deck. Much much smoother, as you can see. And of course, I don't have a problem with anything there. I think that all looks grand. Let's have a quick look outside. And again, we're at a custom-built airport with lots of objects around. And uh, my computer's handling it quite nicely, and frame rates are still between, I'm still peaking at about 56, and uh, so jumping really between 40 and 56 as I as I move around, which is plenty, absolutely plenty, and that all looks great to me. Let me know what you guys think. As I say, I've done this video because a lot of people ask me to share my graphic settings. Um, so I can go back now to uh, to what they were, but do you know what? To be perfectly honest with you, this looks absolutely fine, and uh, this is now set to uh, set to medium. The biggest jump is be from low to medium settings. Medium to high is a little jump, and even high to ultra is only a minuscule jump in the quality. And unless you're running a 4K display. I don't think you're going to notice too much difference. So I hope that's answered a few questions to those of you that keep asking about the uh, the graphics displays. Um, either way, when you compare that against uh, X-Plane and FSX, I'm afraid I'm sold. Regardless of what settings I'm using, it's always going to look much better. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.